In Sunday's win over the 49ers, the defense made strides, players stepped in and stepped up, plus a lot more that stood out to Pete Carroll in his weekly game breakdown. What's going on, Jackie Montgomery with your Seahawks Daily? Well, after the team's first loss, they rebounded in a big way with an important divisional win over the San Francisco 49ers. One thing that made that possible was the defense's performance. Well, we played one of the best running teams in the NFL, most most committed running teams, and, and uh, we really were able to play uh, you know, a, a really good day's work uh, throughout. The perimeter stuff, the stuff they tried to do against us, we handled it. Uh, we played really well on the edge. Third down work was, uh, you know, we, we got three sacks on third down in the game. We, we were alive and active, and it felt more like it felt earlier in the year in, in terms of our activity. Um, but certainly the guys played really well up front and pursued the football like crazy that made it all happen. So, so it was a good day, a really good day's work um, to hold anybody like that, particularly a team that's been ripping. You know, we take pride in that. Coach Carroll made the joke earlier in the day that Sunday's inactive list looked like an all-star roster, but despite missing several starters, the team was able to get the job done. Yeah, we're really proud of those guys. Played really hard. They 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 were excited about it, you know. And then, but but nobody. It was not too big for any of them. Uh, it, it, it's really exciting to see that happen. You know, it's it's fun. The guys get fired up, and you know, however it works out. So so they did his stuff and. Penny Hart made a couple of good tackles on, on the kickoff team. You know, guys are jacked about those guys. When they get their chance, they step up and do something good. So, yeah, it was a, it was a good day. Cornerback DJ Reed played in his first game for the Seahawks, coincidentally against his former team, and he shined with an interception, six tackles, and two passes defended. He also played a key role in some blitz packages. I think John hit this exactly on point. I mean, he hit it exactly right. He, he, he talked about, you know, if, if, we, if we get this guy now, he's not going to be ready for a while. When we, you know, down, down the schedule, there could be a chance where, you know, he could jump right in. He's the kind of guy that could jump in quickly and help us if we need him. I mean, he called all of it, and, and uh, I loved what he looked like on film when we were evaluating him. He just played like he's been playing. It, it took him one week to get ready with the, with the team, and the next week he played, and, and he had a really good game and a big factor in the game. So I would say that more, more so me, I think it was more John, you know, put this, this thing into motion uh, to give him a chance, and, and you know, fortunately when his, his opportunity arose, he, he came through. Rookie defensive lineman Alton Robinson stepped up in a big way. He played the most snaps of his young career, registering a big sack on third down to end a San Francisco drive to go along with three tackles, a tackle for loss, and a quarterback hit, earning himself some more playing time in the future. Yes, he did a beautiful job. He played against the most accomplished edge blockers, and he handled himself really well. He was disruptive. He was tough. Um, he, he did not have any physical issues that he couldn't handle. I love the way he played, his, the aggressiveness that he played with. He wasn't, it wasn't perfect, but it was disruptive and, and a big part of the success of the game plan and, and uh, very confident in the fact that he can play, play against anybody. Rookie DJ Dallas also impressed and looked more and more comfortable as the game went on. He caught all five of his targets, had 18 rushing attempts, ultimately finishing with 58 yards from scrimmage, plus a receiving and a rushing touchdown. I'm not surprised a bit that he, that he handled this because he hasn't appeared at any time like anything's too big for him. But this was such a big role, you know, it could have it made a difference, but it didn't. And so what we know about him now is, he, you know, he can go out and play the football game and come through and we can win, win a game with him playing. And, uh, you know, once he scored once, you know, that, that, that helped. And then he scores again and he's, you know, he's cleaning it off and the whole, you know, though he's brushing the whole thing off, he was having a blast. So he was very much in character and very comfortable with the opportunity and, and was able to cash in on it because of that. Punter Michael Dixon once again set the Seahawks defense up for success with stellar punts. Coach Carroll said this is the best punter he's ever had on a team in all his years of coaching. He's an extraordinary player. What's really awesome about Mike, he's such a great athlete that he, you know, he, he's got a real competitive mentality that, that he loves being in the moment. He loves being in the challenge kicks and opportunities. Uh, he looks forward to it. He's counting on making every kick. You know, he's got a great mental uh, outlook of the game, and, and uh, he's just another one of the competitors. Mike is he's an everyday ball player, you know, and, and you can count on him to come through, and so we, we count on him to make those plays. In other news, we all know the Seahawks traded for veteran defensive end Carlos Dunlap last week. Pete Carroll is expecting him to start practice with the team on Wednesday with the chance to play against the Bills. He should be with us throughout the week. And really, he will have had, had taken a, a week off, so it's like he had his personal bye week and he's ready to play again. And he's been fit and all of that, so um, we're looking forward to him jumping right in and he should be able to 
um, assimilate easily with he's had some days to learn and, and he's been in communication with Clint and, and all that so uh, we've been messaging back and forth so everything's going fine it should work out just fine. Coach Carroll is expecting safety Jamal Adams to be back on the practice field this week and explained how they approach his workload as they prepare for week nine. It's been a while since he's been with us consistently. We'll have a play pitch count during, during uh, Wednesday and Thursday uh, leading into Friday. Um, we'll take each day one day at a time uh, to see how he responds the next day. It's really important, the signals that he sends us the next day, and we'll see what happens so with the intent. And I know I'm saying this because I know he, he's excited and dying to get out there and get playing that we really don't know, you know until we get through it. But um, with a really high confidence that we've the process has been great. He's had enough time and he feels good. So now we just need to monitor it through. It's exactly what you're asking in a really good way so that um, he feels comfortable one day to the next. That means that we won't overdo it at any day. And we, you know, we might have to count plays in, game, in the game too. I don't know that. Uh, but we'll wait and evaluate all of that as, as we go through the week. Well, Pete Carroll did have some important injury updates. He is hoping that Ben Simeola will make it back this week. And Chris Carson, they'll evaluate him later in the week. You can find all the other injury updates on Seahawks.com.